<laughs> okay, let's get going. All right, so we uh, we just spent some time with our with our our new teams and and people are introducing themselves. You guys are starting to get a sense of stuff. Um, uh, and so today we, we did that. We went went, around, went over finalizing our groups and all that kind of good stuff. Um, now we're going to work on. Um, doing some uh, first little toe in the water of some virtual um, exploration of quantitative diversity measurements, right? So um, this is something you could use this tool if you want um, in, in, in for your species searching, or you don't have to, but, but it's, it's, a, it's a reference that people uh, frequently use across the state of California when they're doing stuff like you guys are doing, which is, hey, is this critter a problem? Should we be worried about this organism? Do we need, you know, is this thing rare? Is this thing common? That, that type of stuff. And then uh, hopefully we'll have some time to start talking about the value of diversity uh, at the end of the lab session today. So for this, so, so don't do anything yet, but let me just explain what we're going to do and then, and then we'll, we'll, I'll walk you guys through this and I'll, I'll help walk you through the start of it and then let you guys go on your own. So we're using a, uh, an online database produced by the state of California. Um, which is a spatially explicit pulling together of data. Um, yeah, I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so, so what we're going to do today is, is we're gonna, you guys are going to log on. You're going to use this web-based mapping portal to just look for some stuff. And so the first thing we're going to do is just play around a little bit and just sort of make sure you're comfortable with the interface and, and see how it works. And then we'll, start, we'll do a little thing just to start to look for patterns here in Ventura County of stuff, of, of diversity of, of things. And then we'll do a, a, a virtual, essentially a virtual diversity transect using, using this, uh, this portal. Um, for this, we'll be adding some, I'll have you guys add your own data layers in there you, in, in, from a, a larger data set that exists on the website. Um, and then you guys can play around with it all on your own uh, computers, right? After the fact, if you guys want to go search for your organism, you can. Some of your organisms will have some decent data in there. Some of them won't. Um, but at least it's an option for you guys to know about. Cool? OK. So the first thing, um, if, uh, I, I'll get you going. But the first thing is, why don't you guys go to this? You can either just search BIOS and the number 6 will probably come up and then click the link. Or just type in this apps.wildlife.ca.gov slash bio6. BIO6 refers to the sixth iteration of this database. And that's the current version. So I'll give you guys a second. Just, just get on that. Uh, uh, if you guys have Chrome, they, they recommend Chrome. But theoretically, any, any browser will work. OK, so, so when you got on, you guys got, it looks something like this, right? Uh, and so you, you, you're probably on this page. So this is the landing page for BIOS. And then I'm just going to come up here and um, well, let me first say that um, this began with an entity called the California Natural Diversity Database. And that still exists. That's still a thing we do. Um, to really manipulate that and get into that, you have to have a subscription. And it's really, it's really made for people that are more doing research-based stuff. Um, so what we're going to use is a public, ver a public version that's that and a bunch of other stuff. So this is following the guidance of NatureServe, which is this organization that, that, recommend, that, that, that helps us um, standardize how we can pull together biological data um, uh, and data about the natural world in a more standardized format. And so that's what we're doing here. And so in the state of California, this is manifest in this thing called Bio6. And this is free. This is accessible to anybody. You don't have to have a subscription or be a professor or anything like that. So I'm going to click this. It's going to load for a second. It's going to give me a warning or a, or a caveat. OK, and then it's going to say, hey, uh, you know, this is like, uh, so, so everything that's on here is publicly available. It's not, oh, it's, it's constantly being updated. So sometimes something might be missing. And so this is just saying, hey, this is, we might have an error or two here or there. And you just say, OK, accept. And then, yes, OK, and I'll close this pop-up window. OK, and so this is what it looks like. How many people have taken GIS in this class? It's about half. OK. Um, how many people have used, uh, how many people have not used web-based data portals, or ma web-based map data portals, which is OK, just so I have a sense. OK, it's about a third of us have. OK, that's fine. 
So what this is, is this is essentially a way of showcasing a bunch of data. Data that has explicit location information, latitude, longitude, et cetera. The data is in, this data is in two primary flavors. One is a polygon. So one is a shape. So, so it could be the shape of California, could be the shape of Ventura County, could be the shape of something else. Those are polygons. And so, so if, if I, we have a polygon right here, boop, it, it just says this is the edge of, of the condition. It just says in this condition is something, is water, is my species, something of that nature. The other main f version of the data is, is little teeny, t well, okay, sorry, there's three. <laughs> there's three. Well, actually, there's more than that, but, but, but for our purposes, there's, there's the polygon. There's also point data. That would be, let's say, a roadkill, right? So we saw this critter was dead. Someone, it was in this exact lot, Latin lawn, and it's a bobcat from 2010, right? And so you might, you, you could put some data in here and just be a bunch of points. So that's, a, that's, that's another type of data you may find useful in your explorations. And then the other kind is, is sort of related to that data point but it's where we've, we've um, looked at everything across the landscape. And so there's essentially a bunch of little points and little teeny tiny grids called a raster. And we've, we've for example, like, looked at the slope of the mountain or the density of the plants or something like that. And so the whole area or a whole region will have a cell and that cell will have some data in it. So it's really, really good for plants. It's kind of in the middle for plants. It's crappy for plants, that kind of stuff. Right? And all this data is accessible in this portal. So essentially what we're, you're looking at is, is the data visualized in something like Google Earth. And we have some background layers. So when we first turn this on, all the stuff you see to the left is all the background information. So there's, you know, in this case, I have, uh, this, is, this is a terrain map with some common roads. If I, I can play around, and this is all customizable, so just everybody watch me for a second, and then, then you guys can start playing around. And then I, I can, for example, click this, and this is a satellite-based view, which is, you know, shows me a little bit about topography and vegetation. It, you know, so everybody's going to have their own uh, favorite thing. Over on the left here, this is where we access, where we manipulate uh, stuff that we see displayed on the, on the map. So for example, I can, I can turn things on and off um, by, by clicking these guys. If I hit this pull down, it'll give me more detail. I can get, you know, so I, I can be as, as specific or, or whatever as I want, okay? And those are all customizable. Okay, let's turn, turn those off right now. Okay, um, so, so th th that's all to make it aesthetically pleasing, make it useful for you visually, et cetera. The main uh, value here is in um, is in pulling in data. And there's all kinds of data. So as I mentioned, uh, the, the sort of way back, back in the day, nucleus of this was the California Natural Diversity Database, which is, hey, where, is, where are these critters? Is there, are, are these critters here? Is there a lot of them? That kind of stuff. Um, and, uh, and, and that now is one of many different layers. So we have things like that, which is a large project where people synthesize a bunch of information and professor types, consultant types spend you know, years coming together and figuring this stuff out and then making a, a big massive chunk of data. It also though includes one-off things and things where people just look at say one critter or one, one type of uh, ecosystem or one species of plant or something of that nature. So it's a mix. So when you start exploring for data in here, you're gonna get both sort of synthetic, overarching, big giant studies and little teeny tiny things. Some things will be the entirety of the state of California. Some things will be a subset of California. Some things might just be in a very small area. And it's, it's just, there's, there's a whole variety of things. Cool? Regardless, how we pull that data into our, um, into our, our viewer here is, uh, is up here I have the, these buttons, right? So I'm going to hit this plus BIOS data. So if I click that, it's going to come up with this, this dialog box. Okay, well, this wasn't what I was looking for, but that's fine. So I don't, I don't know what the heck this is, but that's fine. So I find the thing, whatever the thing is, right? And then I hit this plus sign that says add. And then notice over here, and I'm going to close this. Then notice over here, it's shown up, but nothing has is, nothing is changed here. Yeah? So now if I click this little box here, it'll turn it on. Now I'm farther up here, so we can't see it. 
right? And um, if I hit make this little, uh, open up this, this expanding guy and then hit this guy, it'll tell me, ah, here's all this stuff. But I can't see it because I'm zoomed super far out and this is just point Magoo. So what I can do is these little three ellipse dot things, I can click that and it gives me more stuff. First thing, if I click on this thing over here, it's going to tell me about this data. This is the metadata. This tells me who collected it, uh, uh, what it was for, you know, all that kind of stuff. This next button here is going to uh, zoom to that layer. So if the layer is this, if the data is distributed across the state of California, it'll, it'll be the whole state of California. But if it's something like this layer here, which is a subset, it's going to zoom me to the extent of the data. So first, let me close this. So we have more real estate to play with. And I'm going to hit this. And now I've zoomed into to Point Magoo. And now it's showing me. So this, clearly this data was created just by the military base, just for their, their localized property at um, the Point Magoo unit of, Ventura, of Naval Base Ventura County. And so we have all this weird stuff and like, what the hell is this? So this is what we're talking about, these polygons. Okay, that's, what we, that's one of the categories of data. So check it out. So here we have this yellow uh, shape and all that yellow is, what's that yellow? I don't know, there's, there's some kind of funky thing. But if I look over here, I can go down and go, oh, it's one of these yellows, right? But I would really like to know what that, what that, what that thing is. Right? As opposed to me guessing, is it, is it sort of dark yellow or kind of dark yellow or what? So I can come over here to my tools and this thing that says identify features, I can go boop. And then I can go tap, and then I can go tap this dude. And oh, okay, sorry, right. I have to activate the layer. So I have to come up here first. I have to click on this. So see this guy became blue now? So I click on that, come over here, get my identify features, and now I click on this, and it says, ah, you know, you don't, I don't have to guess as to what that thing was. Here, this is what's called the, an attribute table, and so this is all the information about that point, about that cell, about that polygon. Cool? Make sense? Okay, so what I first want you guys to do, uh, oh, sorry, and then at the very end, what you guys will do for one of our things here, let me close all this, is I'll just say you can, um, uh, we can quick print. So at, at some point you can, if you wanted to archive this, you can print what you're seeing. You can also download the data, but we're not gonna be doing that today. But, but, but you can pull the data down and do your own exploration if you'd like. Um, and any of our free tools that we have on campus, uh, our ArcGIS or our ArcPro or uh, ArcGIS Online, any of those tools if, if you guys know about those, but we don't have to do that. But you can always print it up. You can always say, hey, I made this map of the distribution of my critter or what, whatever the heck. Boom, I can make it, I can, I can archive it. And again, this is, this is publicly available, free to everyone. Let me say a couple quick comments before I turn you guys loose to start exploring. One, don't be fooled by this. Everybody look at me. Everybody look at me in the eyeballs. Don't be fooled by this. This is a super helpful tool. It is only a tool. This is wrong. Everybody look at me. This is wrong. This is not nature, right? This is a subset. This is helpful. What you guys tend to do when you see this is you go, oh, that's where the plants are. Nope. That's where some people surveyed some plants a few years ago. It's not necessarily what's right here, what's right now. Much of this work is driven by agencies uh, 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 needs and, and concerns and stuff like that, right? It's not all from agencies. If you did a senior thesis and did a survey for some plants and mapped them out, you can actually upload your data there. So it's not all somebody trying to sue somebody or, or somebody trying to regulate someone or anything like that. But it is the case that this is not equally sampling all of the biodiversity that's out there or all of the ecosystems. We have a focus on things we're particularly concerned about from a conservation perspective. So these tend to be rare things. These tend to be fragmented things. These tend to be things near where people are doing stuff. Not necessarily out in the middle of the desert where no one goes. So, so there's a sampling bias in this data, right? Still useful, still helpful, but I just wanna make sure, cause you guys seem to be, what I've found in recent years, you guys see this and you, you, cause it's online, you think it's real. 
and you think it's, it's awesome and kick butt. It is not. It is helpful, it is useful, but this is by no means a complete articulation of the diversity or the, the current status. So it's a great starting point, but it's only a starting point. Make sense? What a great question on an upcoming quiz. Is, is all the diversity in California uh, visualized in, the, in BIOS, right? And the answer is? No. no. Okay, good, good. So good starting point, but that's all. Okay, so let's take five minutes. You guys just play around and, and see if you just, just practice adding some data and get a little bit comfortable, and then we'll start on the next thing. All right, cool. All right, any other questions? Anybody else stuck? Everybody, it make, make sense? Everybody else can navigate okay? All right, cool. All right, now, so for this first thing, the first thing you'll, you'll do, and you're going to download a picture of this or, or save a copy of this so that you'll be part of our write-up that we'll do. What I want to know is I just want to look for gross patterns. And, and this is all relative to Ventura County. So, so our frame of reference here is Ventura County, not the state of California. Cool? So I just want to know, hey, you guys, tell me something about the pattern of, of, of diversity here, right? And so um, you can add more things, but the things I suggest you start with are these. So mountain lion habitat suitability. Um, okay, let me just explain. When you guys type these things in as you start to pull in data, that's going to get, like if you type in mountain lion, it's going to get a bunch of things, right? Which is totally cool. Some of them are for a specific project, right? In the San Francisco Bay Area or the Sierra Nevada mountains or something of that nature. Uh, and some are in our area. So for this, pro for this next activity, we want to just look at Ventura County stuff. So you might find something, add it in, but then when you go to look for it, you find it's not in our area. That's cool. You just delete that, right? So that's fine. That, that data is not helpful. So the four things I, I suggest you guys um, start looking at are, are, are some examples of things you can look at. Mountain lion habitat suitability. And this is the, the unique identifier number in the database, 2916, but, but you know, so, so that one. Uh, least bells viria, which is a, a, a rare bird species that we have, um, endangered bird species that we have, that is actually here physically on campus that has caused us, that has caused campus a lot of consternation because where we, the, you guys don't even call it the new because you're so young, but the new entrance road, <laughs> the new entrance road, which is the main entrance road that comes over the little bridge and sort of, you know, pulls in right near the bus stop uh, on, on to, over there on campus. That, when I first started coming here, that didn't exist. We built that, and uh, they built the road first over Cayugas Creek, or the bridge over Cayugas Creek, and then the road through the fields towards campus. And then that last little bit, like between where the parking lots are now, basically, and, 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 and the main core of campus, uh, they're, they were like, well, we're put, we've already built the road. They already built the road. And then the next year, they started to build the little small bridge that we walk across and the small bridge that people can drive across. And it turns out there was a tree. Or was it, what was it? I'm trying to remember. Eucalypt? Sycamore? I, anyway, I can't remember what it was. I think it's Sycamore. Anyway, the tree was there. And right ex literally in the middle of where the, where the road was going to go, like, we're only going to knock down two trees, was a endangered least bells vireo nest. Campus was, the technical term is pissed. Like what? So we delayed everything a year. We had to wait for the birds to leave the nest and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, so, so look at least bells vireo suitability. These first two data layers are raster based data layers. Remember, that's, that's everything in the area and every little bit gets a score. So it's either like super good, in the middle, empty, missing, you know, that kind of stuff, right? And so these are saying, hey, given what we know about the vegetation, given what we know about the landscape, is it likely that this critter might live here or, or this critter could live here, right? Doesn't say it does, but just potential. Um, and then uh, the other two I suggest you just take a look at. One is native bird richness. This, okay, so these first two are for specific species, two vertebrates, right? A terrestrial one, a bird one. This next one is about birds in general, and so how many, it, what we think the estimated number of, of bird species that occur in this one area could be, right? And so this one is going to be a bit funky, it's, it's going to be a series of polygons and, and they'll, they'll look funky to you because they'll look like honeycombs, they're going to be hexagonal. Um, okay, so check that one out, that, that, and, and, but, that, but that's multiple things, that's not one species, that's a community of, of birds. And then the last one is a polygon, 
And this one doesn't show anything about critters. This just shows where we've done some modeling efforts several years ago um, as to where terrestrial wildlife, so terrestrial vertebrates primarily, um, are most likely to move, to move between a patch of intact uh, grassland, uh, shrubland, et cetera, to another big patch of grassland, shrubland. Okay, so we have three different types of data here. We have, we have well, I, I, yeah, well, we have, we have raster-based stuff, we have uh, unique polygons, and then we have um, uh, uh, other polygons. So, look, so first add those four things, and then any other ones you think you might be interested in. And what you're gonna do is create a map, and look and see what you see with patterns. Where in Ventura County do we see the greatest diversity? Where do we see the lowest amount of diversity? In broad strokes. Cool? All right, have at it. I'll leave this up so you guys can look at the, uh, look, look at the, look at the um, layers. Everybody got the four names yet? Does anybody need, need to lead it up a little more? Okay, so what are you guys doing that? I'm gonna show you one more thing that I haven't shown you yet. Okay, you, you guys have a look at here. The one thing I haven't shown you is, is how you can, uh, it, you, don't, you don't need to do this, but just for complete, com completeness and maybe something you want to deal with your um, uh, species looking or whatever. So I can also do some little bit of tweaking of this data, right? This isn't, this isn't a super hardcore, um, full-on ArcGIS type of interface, but it's still, you can do some things. So have a look at, I've added my native bird richness in here, right? And this is, this is the richness of birds uh, in all these different honeycomb cells, hexagonal cells across the state of California, right? But I just told you our lab activity is just on Ventura County. Or maybe the consulting firm you're working for is only, the contract is just to work on Ventura County, right? So two things. One, you guys mentioned that the website is hanging a bit or, or is slow. So if we don't need to load all that extra data, maybe we can, maybe it's a little bit faster, right? Um, but then also visually, if I'm trying to create a report on Ventura County, it's not really helpful to have all this stuff with California in it, yeah? So have a look over here. I can go back to my tools. So everybody stare up at the screen. I can go back to my tools. So if I go, if I go to tools, and I come down here and I, and I do this select by attributes, you can do the same thing graphically, but, but, but for the, this purpose, I'm gonna say select by attributes. And essentially I can do some manipulation of what is displayed, okay? So for folks that are new to, to GIS, what you need to know is this is a big database. So every single little, in this case, each of these little grids has a location data, a latitude, longitude, et cetera. And then there's information in there. What this stuff, what we're looking at right here is this column called native bird count in the, in the you know, back end that you can't easily see. And there's some number for each cell. There's some value for each cell. So what I can come in here and, and I, can, I can do manipulations of that or it can do manipulations based on geography. So for example, check this out. I wanna come up here and I'm gonna start with what's the attribute, or, or excuse me, what, what's the field I have to use? And all this stuff right here, these are all the fields that are in this particular data layer. It's gonna vary depending on who made the data, et cetera. But what I told you guys is I said, hey, let's do, let's do Ventura County. So I can come down here, say county, so I said, okay, there's county, and then the operator is gonna be equals, and then I'm gonna say Ventura. So I'm gonna say, pick the, right now it's showing all the data. I'm saying, no, 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 I only wanna show data where the county chunk of data is equal to Ventura, and then do that. So now when I do that, boom, now it's all down here, right? And so now when I zoom down here, what I see is as I go across the state of California, there's no data displayed, but then Ventura County is where it's all displayed, right? So that's, and, and then we can do that to show just you know, numerically, we can filter the data, we can do all that kind of stuff. So you guys are welcome to filter the data if that's helpful. You don't have to for this exercise, but that's the last thing I haven't shown you, right? So, so we've talked about adding data, how to turn it on and that kind of stuff. And, and, um, uh, and then this one is how to sort of ma manipulate what's being displayed or manipulate the quantities. Cool? All right. 
Back to, back to looking for patterns in Ventura County diversity. Okay, so let, let's put on pause. I just want to do the next one just so we don't run out of time. And you guys can keep working on this. But, but, but let me say, the next one, so that's the first thing we did. So the first thing we did was like, let's just look for gross patterns. Does it look like there's more diversity up in Los Padres, more diversity in, in Thousand Oaks, more diversity in Oxnard? You know, like, like what's, what's, what's the rough pattern? Okay, and what are you guys seeing so far with that? It's, ri it's rich, but within the county, wh 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 where do we see the most kind of st action happening? Does say again? Like city. Yes, yes. So the urban areas tend to be lower than the non-urban areas. Uh, fields also tend to have like a Ag tends to be much lower than the more intact landscapes. Yes, totally. Good. Okay. All right, so, so you guys are looking for that. You're, you're going to make some nice, pretty thing, and you're going you're gonna to print it out, and then I'll, I'll give you a prompt, and you're just going to write a, you know, a paragraph about generally what I see as my, as my uh, patterns in Ventura County. Cool? Okay. The next one, we're going to do a virtual transect. So for this, I want, uh, and there, there, there's various ways to do this. I was trying to figure out a way that's simple and not, not overwhelming. People don't have GIS and stuff yet. So, so okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a transect. We're going to go from the coast inland. We'll do like three. Uh, I'll take that back. Never mind. I think, I think I just told you to do one, I think, when I was, when I was writing this up. So just you do, do a transit. But it's going to be in Ventura County. So in other words, uh, what we want, and so, so you're going to search for, in this case, you're just going to search for CNDDB when you do it. Not, not quite yet. Not quite. But when you go to do it. You come up with a bunch of stuff. What we want is the CNDDB elements tracked by county and quad. Really, we're just going to use quad, but I have county in there just so you have a, a reference. Okay, so I just typed in CNDDB, and, I, and so these are the two things I want to add. Elements by county, elements by quad. Boom, boom. Okay. Here is, all, here is the the accounting of critters binned by political jurisdiction, in this case, county, okay? I'm not gonna show that, but, but you can check that out for reference. Here is a similar idea, but now instead of using a political uh, uh, boundary, we're using a USGS quad. We're using a, 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 a grid overlaid across the state of California, okay? And that's the thing we're gonna use. So I'm going to zoom into our area. A boom, boom, boom. All right. Um, and now I'm going, to, I'm going to double click this to activate this guy. OK, cool. So now have a look. If I come up here and I do my info tool, identify features, and I click this click this dude, and I click this cell, it's going to tell me all the information in there, right? So it says, ah, there's a uh, white, or sorry, this is, uh, this bald eagle is here, and we have a northern harrier here, etc. right? Everybody with me? But then have a look. Right up here, it tells me there's 53 records. So there's 53 different species in here. Cool? Remember, this is not all the species in the grid. This is the, the rare and the, the things of concern, potentially endangered. So it's not everything, but, it, it's, but it's, it's one frame of reference, yeah? So I got this guy. This guy says it's 53 dudes. Okay, cool. Now I can click on, I might have to close this. Okay, yeah, now I click on the next one. This one has 14 and so on and so forth. So we can do a virtual transect by going from the coast inland, yeah? So what I want you guys to visualize is the, the diversity as we go from a cell at the coast to a cell inland. You can go as far as you want, but I want at least six grid, at least six cells in. Yeah, make sense? So you guys are doing your own trance. Like this is just like we're going out dropping a quadrat on a bunch of beans. And we're saying, what's the richness here? What's the richness here? What's the richness here? Yeah, get the idea? Make sense? Okay, and then you're gonna make a little graph for me, going from, from 
oh, coast to inland. And the units are just going to be how many grid points inland. Is that cool? Last time, or when we did our bean lab, right, we talked about stuff. And you guys all told me what's the best, or not you guys, many of you told me, <laughs> right, what's the best diversity metric to use? And you're like, most of you guys, heterogeneity. I'm like, why? Because it's most accurate, which is BS. It's not most accurate. It's just, it's just one of many, right? But it's cool. It has a lot of advantages. And what's the advantages of, of heterogeneity? You guys remind me? Why might we want to say that that's a good thing to do? Eh, not really. <laughs> why, why have richness, evenness, heterogeneity? Why did oh, so many of you guys say heterogeneity is what I want to use, or I, I think this is a useful one to use? Yes, because it has both identity, how many categories, but then it also is the relational measure of those things, right? Remember, evenness is how we, how, how evenly arrayed uh, organisms are in those different categories, right? Everybody with me? You're already seeing right now how hard it is. So when I give you beans on a lab floor, okay. But when I tell you, hey, go tell me what's going on in Cam Park, or go to, it starts to get a lot harder, right? To do that relation, relative measure, right? So richness, well, all we're using here is richness. That's the only metric, right? A lot easier to get richness, right? Would it be great to have all of these metrics built into the BIOS? Totally. But that's really hard in a practical sense, right? Richness is a bit easier, right? If someone sees at least a bald eagle in that grid, bald eagle. If someone sees at least a least bells virio, least bells virio, you get what I'm saying? So, so we have, so the thing I want you guys to start to understand about conservation is we have the ideal, what would be fantastic, we should have, we should do this, but then we live in the practical world right now where we have to make a decision this week, next week, and someone's gonna say, where are we gonna put this housing development, here or here? And we can't always say, oh, I need 20 more years to figure it out, right? So these more, sometimes, given the setting, there, there's, in other words, there is no universal perfect answer. Heterogeneity, if we can do it, great. If we don't have that, maybe evenness. Maybe if we don't have that, uh, uh, richness. Do you get what I'm saying? So they all have value in different things. So it's not as if there's the best and the worst. In setting X, given constraints Y, this seems like a reasonable diversity metric to use. Cool? Okay, so that's where you guys get. Okay, so turn you guys loose and start. You can, you can keep playing with your first one, but I just wanted to show you that, that uh, uh, second part of this activity. So I just updated. So, so I, I think I, I, I misled you guys. When you do a transect, you got to do at least three. You got to do at least three transects, six grids long, right? So you can create an average. So you can create, calculate an average and the variance around there. 